What's up, everybody? How you doing? I am Chris Thompson, back here with Gene Davis. You are a note investor? Correct. So, note investing. Explain it to me like I'm five. When you buy a house, you usually get two things, a deed of trust mm -hmm. and a promissory note. The promissory note is the terms and conditions of the loan and how it's going to be paid back. Mm -hmm. The deed of trust just says you own it. Right. The deed of trust collateralizes the note. I buy, sell, and create notes. I can't break it any down any more than that. Um, so what do you look for when you are buying a note? Obviously it's gonna be at a discount, right? Yes, of course. Okay. Um, what's your like ideal what's your ideal situation? Say I have this hundred thousand dollar property mm -hmm. and it was a a normal twenty percent down, so it's an eighty thousand dollar node, twenty percent equity in it. Break that one down for me. I'd look at uh, how you underwrote the borrower. Mm -hmm. I look at their credit history. I look at if you're servicing it, meaning are you escrowing for taxes and insurance? Who's paying that? How's that being paid? Mm -hmm. I'd also look at uh, how long they've been paying, like so their pay history. Then I'd actually look at the house. Where mm -hmm. is it? Is it a war zone? Is it a situation where the equity is going to go up, down? And I look at those sort of things and put it together and I try to look at a crystal, sort of like a crystal ball for mm -hmm. the person look like they're the type that's going to continue paying so I can get a monthly cash flow on that note. Uh, that's why you do it, right? That's pretty much it. Okay. So before you really care about the property, you more so care about the person behind the scene type stuff mm -hmm. and then you dive in more to the property. Well, the paper first. Paper, then people. Then the property and then kind of people. Well, yeah, the people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that certainly makes sense. Um, do you have certain markets that you like? Yeah, right now, every note that I have is in the Virginia area, Central Virginia, and okay. some sort of in the 757 that I have free down there. So trying okay. to work my way that way. 757, that's Virginia that's Beach. That's Virginia Beach, yep. Norfolk, Hampton Roads, that area. But most everything I have is A lot of people love that market. Yeah. Why do they love that market? Is it? I know there's a ton of military there. Yes. Um, I have some family down there. I know I have friends in the military down there. Yep. So is that mainly why? So everybody has their own little reasons why. Right. I like it because military people have to get deployed in and out, but they buy houses. I got you. A lot of times, that makes sense. Mortgages are great rates. Mm -hmm. So I'll buy them sub two. Yep. Create a wrap. I'm not sure if everybody knows what that is, but so if you don't know what a wrap is, uh, so he buys the property subject to, takes over the seller's uh, existing mortgage, mm -hmm. and then wraps his equity literally around that note. So just say that note is 100000 he wraps fifty around it, sells that property to a homestead buyer. Yep. Uh, homestead buyer, somebody who's going to live there for 150 He makes that spread. I don't have to worry about the taxes, the toilets, tenants, maintenance. I'm essentially Bank of Jeannie Davis. I just collect the payments. That's it. So you're like a landlord without any of the issues Correct. because you're the bank. Correct. No different than if you get your mortgage from Bank of America, Wells Fargo, your toilet breaks, you're not calling them. Your toilet breaks with his loan, you're not calling Gene. That's a beautiful thing. That's the reason why I do this part. I like it. Now what are the, um, you know, I guess like the tax implications yeah. of that? Because I know most buy and hold landlords, myself included, buy for the depreciation stuff. Yep. So what? Where, where does that, how do you kind of circumvent that? What do you put into place to not give it all back? So I have a little rule. If I buy a note or create a note, I have to buy a rental to kind of offset it. Okay. Because with notes, it's considered straight income. Right. Because I don't have the actual so, property. I'm not the owner of the actual property. Right. So that's kind of how I offset it. Okay. That makes sense. So it's one to one, one to one. Okay. And I'm, what are you up to now? Notes. Yeah. I have 14 notes. Nice. So and how many properties? Uh, 21. Good for you. So That's good stuff. Try it. Now what's your, do you have an end goal in mind? Yes. My goal is to get to 50 properties and convert, uh, basically have 25 notes, mm -hmm. 25 rentals, one to one. And it has those rentals pay down and that helps my tax implications on the notes as well. So that's the plan. Okay. And after that, I don't need to buy anything else. I'll just retire off those. Because what happens is most people live in their houses from seven to 10 years before mm -hmm. they refi or sell. Right. So those notes are going to start to pay off over time. Makes sense. So that's the plan. That makes sense. 
I may have to talk you into creating a note on some of my properties that I have paid <laughs> off. We should do it. Uh, the other piece I like to do is a lot of times when the houses are on the notes that I create, mm -hmm. if I need a nice chunk of cash, I'll sell a partial, which is like you sell a couple of years worth of payments. I love it. And after I get a lump of cash, and after those years worth of payments, the note comes back to me. So I don't have to deal with it anymore. I like it. I like it. Well, Gene, I appreciate you, man. No um, so we will put all of his accolades up here on how to <laughs> check with him. Um, but uh, really appreciate your time. Likewise. And uh, appreciate you. yeah, thank you, buddy. Uh, so we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.